It was in July 1939 that I first met Franklin Roosevelt in his own home at Hyde Park, just north of New York. It was there in his library, into which he came with his chair, the wheeled chair that he'd only been able to get about in for years. And it was there that he told me that if trouble came, as he thought it would, and New Zealand and the democracies of the South Pacific were menaced, he wouldn't let that danger go without taking some steps to prevent it or avoid it or remove it. It was there that he said that America wouldn't see the cousins down in the South Pacific left continuously in danger. You know how he has kept that promise. Another occasion was at the White House when we were discussing on what subject could the United Nations be brought together to reach reasonable agreement. And he said, what about food? That seemed a subject upon which all could agree, making enough food available to everyone. That was the origin of the conference that was held at Hot Springs to find out whether there was enough resources in the world to provide the food that everybody ought to have. Because, as he said, half the people of the world never had enough to eat, never had had enough to eat, irrespective of war. I question whether the passing of any man could brought more feeling and sorrow than the passing of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Great, humble, quiet, tenacious and courageous, he did what had to be done irrespective of the cost of doing it when it was necessary. It's difficult at any time to say that the passing of any man means an irreparable loss, but if that term can ever be used, it can be used in connection with the passing of the late president. Franklin Roosevelt gave his life to help to hold and extend freedom. Let us ensure his memorial by carrying on till the conflict is over. Thank you.